Are you worried about art theft online? If so, here are my best tips to help prevent that. Hello everyone! Welcome to our business with Ness. I'm Ness and I'm a professional illustrator. I hear from a lot of artists and a lot of you are worried about posting your art online because you're concerned that it might get stolen. And I won't lie, that is a real possibility. That is a real concern. Some thieves will just take the images from your website or from your social media and then they can slap it on any product that they like, like a t-shirt or a mug and sell it for money. And nowadays, there's even the risk of your art getting stolen and fed into AI programs to teach AI art models like Midjourney. So the internet can seem like a pretty scary place to be for an artist. I understand that. That being said, I've always been personally of the firm belief that you should never let anyone scare you or intimidate you into not being able to do exactly what you want to do. A big part of being an artist is the joy of showing what you make to others, of sharing your art with the world. And despite the fact that the internet can be a little bit of a wild west sometimes, it's still a really great place to share your art. And if you have the aspiration one day to be a professional artist and to make a living with your art, then showing what you do online is absolutely necessary in terms of marketing in order to talk about your services and attract clients. So showing your art online has many benefits and don't let anyone prevent you from getting the full enjoyment out of the art that you've made yourself with your own two hands. But that being said, there are actually things that we can do to help prevent art theft and that can put your mind at ease as well. It's a best practice in order to help out uh, mitigate the risks. And that's what we're talking about today. But right before we get started, if you're new here and you would like to see more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell. The bell sends you notification every time that I upload a new video. And so this way you're sure that you won't miss any of the advice. Also do all the YouTube things, like, comment, and all of that. It really helps us out. But without any further ado, let's just jump right into the tips. Tip number one is adding a watermark or a signature. So I'm sure you're already familiar with a signature. That's when you just write your name. Uh, often it's in the corner, like in the bottom corner or right under on the frame of your artwork. It's been customary for millennia for artists to sign their works and makes it very legitimate. But at the same time, it's your mark that you did that that you are the owner of this piece of work, especially if it's a recognizable signature, something that is readable. A watermark is kind of like a signature, but often it will be uh, including some details. So maybe it will have your full name. Sometimes it's like computerized, so it's easy to read and you can put in your Instagram handle or maybe your uh, website address. So it's so that people can find you more easily. It's called a watermark because often you can put it in transparency over your artwork. Some people put it kind of like all in the middle, really big. And I feel like that's really disruptive. I don't like that personally. I don't want to prevent art theft to the point where people can't even enjoy the art anymore. But you can put a watermark in the corner in sort of transparency with some of your details or you can know, just slap your, <laughs> your website link or something like that in the corner where it's not disruptive. Now, of course, people who are really determined can uh, remove watermarks even if they're right over everything. It's possible to remove them using Photoshop and apps like that. And so it's not a 100% certainty. However, if someone is just like taking your image from Google and reposting it, Sometimes they won't bother to try to remove a watermark or sometimes they don't know how. And so at least you get the credit and people can refer back to you. Often when we share our art online, it is not common, but possible to lose control of how it's being distributed. If it gets very popular, sometimes people will just copy paste it, repost it. They can put it on Pinterest and it can go all over the world being reposted, reposted, reposted and then no one knows where it comes from. So 
So if you have your website link or your Instagram handle or your name on it, then at least it can help some people trace where it has come from. It's not a perfect method because like I said, it can be removed by those who are determined enough, but it's better to use a watermark or a signature than not. Tip number two is to reduce the resolution of your work before you post it to the internet. In order to get a good quality print on multiple different items, whether that's a t-shirt, a mug, a wall art, a poster, anything like that, you need a good resolution artwork. That means a large enough artwork. Some people don't care at all. That's a thing. Some people will just take a very small resolution image from Google and slap it on a t-shirt, but that will look terrible. So a good way to deter some art thieves is to only post smaller and lower resolution versions of your artwork on the internet. What you absolutely do not want to do is just, you know, finish a giant painting and just export it as is and put it on your website. First of all, the file is going to be so big that it's going to take a while to load on your website. And that's just not a great experience for anyone because people are going to have to wait on it to load. And then also anyone who wants to steal it has everything they need to just slap it on any product that they want. So a good rule of thumb here, usually you want to create your artwork to be at least 300 DPI of resolution in order to print well. But when you put it on the internet, you want to reduce that to 72 DPI, which is the internet showcase resolution. As you can tell, it's much smaller. <laughs> it's not even a third. And so that's a much smaller resolution. And in terms of the size, you want it to be anywhere between 1200 to 1600 pixels wide, no bigger. An image of that size and resolution will usually be under one megabyte of size. So that's a really good size to share it quickly so that it will load fast. And at the same time, if thieves just want to take it, they won't have a big enough resolution to get a really good quality. So you know that at least some people will prefer to come to you directly to get the good stuff. You never want to put original full size files on the internet directly. You want to safeguard those very, very carefully for your eyes and for your clients only. Tip number three, and that's my favorite tip here, is to showcase your art on social media using only video. I love this because it hits two birds or a million birds with one stone. We know on Instagram specifically that reels are all the rage. Reels are really, really important. They always tell us you have to make reels. <laughs> and a lot of us artists, we don't want to do that. We resist that like crazy. But video format is actually a great way to showcase your work. Not only it's good for the algorithm, but what are thieves going to do with a video of your image? They can't take that and put it on a mug, not easily at least. There are so many different kinds of art reels that you can do from your artwork. If you do traditional art, you can just film it on your desk simply, or you can film five seconds of you drawing on your computer or drawing on your paper in your sketchbook. So anything like a, a work in progress video or just a pan over or a zoom in of your finished piece. If you do digital art, you can print it and then you can do a little zoom. There are reveal reels. Those are really, really popular where you can like turn around your Canva and show the finish or show from the sketch to the finished version. So this is also a very popular kind of video that you can do. And all of those really protect your art almost more than anything else you can do because it is very difficult to get a good resolution anything from an instagram reel the size and format is like really tall portrait and then it's going to be moving so it's almost impossible to steal your art from there and bonus the instagram algorithm is going to love you for it so it's really a wonderful way to do it i have three more tips for you but right before we get to that i wanted to ask you are you worried about art theft online? Is this something that you really concerned? Does it keep you up at night? Do you get stressed before you share your art or does it even prevent you from sharing your art online because it stresses you out so much? And have you had some bad experiences yourself online? Have you had your art stolen before? 
no matter what your experience is, I would really love to hear it. And so go in the comments and uh, let me know what has happened to you in the past and what are your thoughts on the subject. I would really like to know. Tip number four is to disable a right click on your website. If you have your own portfolio website, which I highly recommend if you're trying to find any kind of professional work, a uh, personal website is the way to go. And thankfully, these days, there are so many very, very cheap or even free ways that you can build a website. And when you create your website, you will often have the setting to decide if you want to disable right click on the images. And so that makes it a little easier to protect your images. At least the art thief won't be able to just, oh, I like this right click, save image as, and just save it on their computer and use it as is. If they really want it, they would have to take a screenshot, which they can do that too. But sometimes just inconveniencing the art thief is enough to stop them. So that's a really easy thing that you can do. And again, it's not perfect, but it's always better to have it than not. And all those little things, they really add up to inconvenience those art thieves. Tip number five is to disable the AI opt-ins. There are several social media platforms and different websites online that have opted in into different kinds of AI programs. The most disappointing one that did it was DeviantArt because they automatically opted in everyone without telling us. And we know DeviantArt is a community of artists and so that was really shitty thing to do to just automatically opt in everyone to feed your artwork to AI models it's basically the nightmare scenario many people didn't know about it it was then a huge scandal and I'm not sure if they reversed half on that but it certainly taught us a lesson that you really really have to be careful with those things thankfully for most of these things you can opt out at least or you know there's sometimes just a little box that you can uncheck and for example on DeviantArt they automatically checked it for you but if you go to your settings you can uncheck it and you can decide to not take part in it so that's something that's really really important if you're on any kind of platforms at all you know Behance, Instagram every once in a while you want to take stock and see if any of those AI programs have come into the mix and just make extra sure that you have all of your settings all right to tell these platforms that you do not want them to sell your images to AI programs. Even your website hosts, like uh, if you're on Wix or Adobe Portfolio, these kinds of things, uh, it's worth it to check them periodically just to make sure. Anywhere that you upload your art online, they have the possibility to try to do that on the sneak. <laughs> so you want to just make sure. And lastly, tip number six, also AI related is to use Blaze. A couple of years ago, when we started seeing more and more AI art online, it kind of had a panic effect on all the artists. And I certainly understand that. Suddenly we saw these quite high quality artwork done by machines and created using our art to teach it. A lot of artists were really, really worried that we were going to be replaced. Thankfully, we adapt. And one of the ways that we adapted is there's a new tool that's been created. It's called Glaze and you can use it to cloak your images before you put them online. So how it works is you upload your image and it just very subtly changes it. You will be able to see a very slight difference as if the resolution has dropped a little bit. But when a computer reads your image, they're not going to be able to see the style, the artwork style that it is in perfectly. It's just going to be swirly mess to it, kind of like a Van Gogh style. And that's just really brilliant because one of the biggest worries of AI art is when people feed the artwork of a specific artist into the model and ask the AI to create a piece in the style of X artist. That is really going directly into competition with this artist and artists are very afraid that the models will be able to replicate their exact art style. By cloaking your images that way, you protect your art style, which is your signature. If someone 
takes a bunch of your artwork from your website and they put it in Min Journey and they say, please create a cat illustration in the style of this artist. If you have glazed your images, it will all come out Van Gogh. <laughs> so they won't be able to replicate your style. And recently, the same people that developed glaze took it a step further and they developed what they call nightshade. So this takes it a little bit further because they realized that if they put enough of the glazed images on the internet, that it could even poison the data set, right? And that gave them the idea nightshade is a little bit like a glaze you can put it over your image and it's kind of like a time bomb you send it in <laughs> to the ai art model and it will poison the data as soon as this tool came out the ai bros were really really unhappy about it saying that it was wrong to do this some of them even saying that it was unethical or illegal to do this to destroy the ai art models but seriously Prime a river. <laughs> Nightshade is basically putting a laxative in your chocolate milk in the fridge because your roommate keeps stealing it. Then if he gets a case of the runs, he only has himself to blame for. Shouldn't have stolen your chocolate milk. So using these tools like Glaze and Nightshade to cloak your images before putting it on social media or on your website, it takes a little bit of time, but if you're really concerned about AI art, then it's something that's definitely worth doing. And over the long run, it also helps dismantle these AI art models. So there we go. These were my six top tips. And with these methods, the risks of art theft or misuse of your art can be significantly reduced. In fact, I can say personally for myself, I've been posting my art online for over 15 years now, and to the best of my knowledge, I've only had one case of art theft that I've experienced in all of this time. And don't get me wrong, it did suck. It was not a good week for me. I really, really hated when that happened. But when you think about it, to have one case of art theft as a professional artist who's been doing this for many, many years, and as a person who's been posting my art online for like 18 19 years by now it's really not that bad you know it's not as common as sometimes we fear when i think back on it when i was first starting putting my art online i was really really worried about art theft in the end i'm glad that i didn't let this fear stop me because i would have prevented one case of art theft in 15 years it's not worth it i'm glad that instead I did whatever I wanted with my art and now I'm a professional artist in big part due to how I utilize the internet to get there. So wisdom of the day, don't let the fear of getting your art stolen prevent you from using your own dang art however you want to use it. So if you would like more tips on how to best display your art online in order to get some illustration work out of it, I have a free guide that you might enjoy. It's called five common portfolio mistakes and how to fix them. It's completely free and I will leave the link to that in the description below if you want to use it to audit your website. But that's it for me today. Thank you so, so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to help our small channel grow. And on that note, thanks again for being here and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.